In this video I'm looking at the solution to question 1 of the June 2010 Edexcel D1 paper. This is a question on the topic of algorithms. The question gives us a list of names of nine people and asks us to use a quick sort to produce the list of names in ascending alphabetical order. And then it says you must make your method clear at least by showing the pivots that are used. In part B of the question, we then ask to use a binary search algorithm on the list that we've produced to locate the name Paul. So starting off then with the first part of the question, then we first of all locate the center of this list. Well, if there are nine, then we want the fifth element. So we're going to actually pivot around N so that in our list, we will have n as our center point, and that will be a fixed position. And then we write those to the left, or those which are before n in the alphabet to the left without changing the order, and those that are after n um, in the alphabet to the right, again, without changing the order. So what is pr produced is the following list. We get h, l, a, and J are in the alphabet before N and afterwards V, S, T and P. And for each of these sublists, as they're called, the left hand side, the right hand side, again we choose the middle. Now there are four numbers here, so we go to the right of the center position, which will be the third element A, and in the other sublist T. So we do a similar thing here, so A is now going to be fixed. I'm actually going to write that because we know that that's going to be over at the left hand side. So I'm going to write A over to the left here. Um, N is fixed and T is going to be fixed. So repeating the procedures before, those that are after A and before N, uh, so those are H, L and J without changing the order that they appear. And on after N, we've got um, S and P are before T, and V after it. Our pivots now are L, center of these three, P, and V. So in the next line, we're going to have A is fixed, L is fixed, N, P, and V are all fixed. I'm oh, sorry, T as well. So putting in the positions of H and J, and they come in H and J in those positions there. S comes after P, so that we end up with our list as uh, as it is there. Now, even though those are in order, and they there's a sublist here, uh, we must again look once more to make sure we'd have to check. Even though we know we can see that H comes before J, but we must first of all pivot. So J is going to be fixed. A L N, P, the other pivot there is S, T, and V. So finally, H slots into its correct position there. So we've got H, A, H, J, L, N, P, S, T, V. Four marks for that part of the question, which were allocated as follows. There was an M1 mark for basically getting the, the method correct and uh, an A1 mark for the first line that you produced an A1 follow through for the second one and then finally an A1 for CSO correct solution only so if you made any any errors there you wouldn't get that um, Right, okay, so that's that part of the question. We've now got a list in ascending order. 
and in the next part of the question we're asked to use a binary search to locate P within that list. So the binary search says first of all choose the um, the middle part which is N and we can see that well P comes after N so therefore we can reject everything before that so we can reject A to N in effect what we're doing is crossing out everything that comes up to N we've now got a list of size 4 so again the middle but we're going just to the right of the middle which will be T so we choose T but we can say well P is before T so we're going to reject T and V or everything after T Oops. so re rejecting there T and V then again looking at choosing the middle which happens to be S we can say that P comes before S so we're going to reject S and finally we choose the middle of the list well there's only one in the list and it happens to be P so we've we've found Paul is located in the list the marking for this part of the question again four marks uh, M1 A1 for showing that you you've got the idea of finding the uh, the midpoint and then checking which side of that pivot point the, uh, the you're locating P in this particular case so which side of that middle point P lies and then a1 and a final a1 at the end again correct solution only well that's the end of the solution to this particular question uh, you can find solutions to other questions at www.furthermaths.org.uk.